Metro Vancouver is world renowned for its livability and sustainability. One of the key factors is our regional parks. Studies show that spending time in nature reduces stress and supports mental and physical well-being, which is particularly important during this time when we're being asked to see fewer faces in bigger spaces. Today, John McEwen, the chair of the Metro Vancouver Regional Parks Committee, joins us to tell us about their future plans. Welcome, John. Thank you for having me. Let's begin with the early days of COVID-19. It was important for Metro Vancouver to keep the regional parks open. Why was that such a high priority? The Provincial Health Authority recognized the health benefits of, of people getting out and um, and being in nature. The uh, It was significant. Um, the good thing is with Metro Vancouver Regional Parks, the size of uh, most of our parks offered that ability to do it compared to a lot of the municipal parks, which, which had to close as well because the social distancing rules weren't be able to be effective. And I imagine that had a lot of impact on the mental well-being of residents because during that time, people didn't really know what was happening with COVID. It, it was amazing. You know, um, we saw a lot of people, even in my own neck of the woods, people walking around the neighborhoods just to get out, get out of the house. And so our regional park system, which is comprised of 23 parks, really was uh, really came into uh, into favor of people getting out to see them and exploring a lot of them. Although we did have a few challenges. Yes, I, yeah. I would imagine. So what were some challenges? Because all of a sudden, the, the parks were getting. Well, I don't know if they're quite flooded, but certainly busier than usual. Well, you know, our park usage was up 60%, oh, so wow. it was it was quite overwhelmed. A couple of them we had to close, i.e. the grouse grind, because we couldn't practice the social distancing. Um, in my neck of the woods, Belcare Regional Park had some issues with certain areas of parks that we had to close down, um, piers and such and that, because people weren't maintaining that social distancing. But for the most part, it, it gave an, an incredible opportunity for people to explore our, the regional park system and to, to really get out and, and get that that um, back to nature and, and the health benefits of, of being outside. How did you try to maintain that physical distancing while people were, st were still enjoying the parks? We put all our park rangers in regards to making sure that they were educating people as well as our social media from Metro Vancouver really pushed the six meters. We actually used quite innovative ways where we had a cougar, we had a, the wingspan of a, of a bald eagle. Not a real cougar though. Not right? a real <laughs> cougar, but we had pictures out to show that people and it, it really engaged with people and people really enjoyed it. And then we also did a really good job of trying to distribute people a little bit better to the parks because the, they were just so overwhelmed. We couldn't even, the parking was a, became an issue in that. So we were talking with TransLink about getting different routes in regards to be able to, to facilitate that. Oh, so that people could actually get out through public transit to different parks. Yeah, you know, in, in for example, in North Shore, um, down in Deep Cove, we had a big issue there. The people so were just popular. flooding to, it seems like our parks became an Instagram picture. And as soon as these pictures came out with their beautiful splendor, people would then would flock to them. So we really had a, a challenge with that. I'm a little bit old school, so the, the whole social media effect, I, I didn't really recognize it at first, but it certainly became something to deal with. Do we have a, a good balance right now between our green spaces and development? I think we're playing a bit of catch up. I think that the, um, the, the park usage is outstripping the uh, demand of, of the population. Meaning we need more park we, spaces? We need a lot yeah. more. The problem is, is like you, you take some areas uh, that are already fairly concentrated, like the city of Vancouver, uh, city of North Vancouver, they don't have that green space to add to their inventory because like they're they're full. they're full, you know, and they're, as they're adding more and more pop density, it, it's a challenge. So it puts a bigger effect on the outlying community. So I think where I'm from in the Northwest sector, we need to really start focusing on, we know that population is going to go out in these areas and same with the South Langley's and that. So we need to start really working on making sure that we're securing more land from as a regional, not just a municipal, but as a regional body, because the region needs this to be able to get people out there. Could you explain to me how that process even works? How do you go about acquiring land to eventually turn that into a regional park? We keep an eye on certain properties, so um, we're very cognizant of it. You know, the big challenge is, is that um, when we come to the Metro Vancouver, the regional board, is we have a lot of demands on, on the taxpayer. You know, there is only one taxpayer. We have the municipal taxes, which in some municipalities like the Surreys and Coquitlam's and, and Maple Ridges that are growing are able to put money into their park situation. But we need to uh, really work on the regional park system because these regional parks are much greater in size and are able to facilitate 
situations like this where people can travel out, hopefully with more uh, with transit to be able to get to these parks so we don't have the big issues with parking. Can you tell me how you distinguish a regional park versus a provincial park versus a municipal park? I think some people might sort of think they all blur together. Yeah, well, municipal park is, is really instituted from the municipality, and it's a municipal park, and they maintain it, and the regional parks are, um, are done through the, through the region, through Metro Vancouver. Provincial parks are, are usually vast areas that are protected areas from an e ecological aspect. Um, there are a few, you know, quite used, well used, like the Jeffrey Lakes and stuff like that with, as provincial parks. And there's also federal parks, like um, uh, in Tofino, for example, you drive through, that's a, a federal park. I heard from one person how one way to think about regional parks is sort of the day trip. Yeah, very good point, yeah. If you're going to go out, drive yeah. out a little bit, not too far, but drive yeah. out for, for the day, that's yeah. a regional park. If you're going to go camping, that's a provincial park. Yeah. And then a municipal park would be something more in your neighborhood. Yeah. Aside from being a beautiful place to go and visit and play, what other role do our parks and our greenways play? At Metro Vancouver, we, we've, uh, as the committee, we've had a lot of speakers and, and they, they're really starting to talk about the health benefits and how strong those are with a direct correlation to the proximity to, the, to our parks. And that is becoming more and more evident and it has been really focused during the COVID thing um, issue. And so I really think that that's something that uh, is becoming more and more, as well as the ecological aspect. In terms of the ecological role that the parks and the greenways, they all play, can you tell me a bit about that? Because there's some um, areas, conservation areas as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We protect them and, and it's a real balancing act between us uh, at Metro Vancouver. How much of the park that once we acquire this land, do we actually get into developing as, and opening up? Because we want to make sure that it, we protect those ecological areas, but we also give access to, to the public. And that's a challenge that we're going through right now as we're developing Widgeon Park up in uh, the northeast corner in Coquitlam, which will be, I believe, about one and a half times the size of a Stanley Park. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're also working on, uh, which is something that I'm really excited about and was recently um, featured in the Vancouver Sun about the Greenway and that is to be able to connect these parks through greenways through people able to bike to be able to run and, and that and I, I don't know if a lot of people are aware um, with our regional greenway strategy that we have four of them but the the main one that we're working on right now would be to connect New Westminster all the way to Science World in Vancouver. What's a greenway just to be really clear? So a greenway is something a biking path like a normal path uh, a blue way, what they're trying to create is where they're daylighting a lot of the storm drains, you know, runoff in that and daylight to, to be able to bring cre uh, fish and, and make them living again. So daylighting means opening them up? Yeah, yeah, taking the pipe out and actually making a little, a little stream, re-establishing re the streams. Oh, and then putting a the greenway right beside it would be amazing. I can see that being very popular. Yeah, you know, we often think of what would have happened if the decision wasn't made at Stanley Park for the city of Vancouver. It would look so different today. Yeah, yeah, and you think of the health benefits that it offers the city. So we really need to look at the long and, and the big picture in, the, in these things. So. What are some of the current projects that are underway right now with regional parks? Well, Widgeon, as I said, out in, in Coquitlam is a big one. Um, we're just, we just actually approved. Um, we've got people working on the whole design of, of that park. And, and really, again, figuring out what we're going to leave as, as open and what we're going to leave is because it's a very uh, ecological sensitive area right along the uh, estuary there. We have some challenges. Uh, we're going to be doing a big development out in Campbell Valley, which is uh, south, south Langley. The Greenway, again, we're really working on a lot. Kanaka Creek, we're, we're still continuing to, to develop that area. Burns Bog, we're hoping to get, you know, a work in partnership with uh, other levels of government and do an interpretive centre. And also, there is a boardwalk out there that is in sort of disrepair that we need to uh, address and, and make it more accessible for wheelchair and, and for people and that. Just to be able to, to kind of go in a portion of the bog to really understand what the bog's function is and how unique a, and, and special a place that it is. We just recently had an announcement out at Burns Bog and the province was there as well as the federal government and it, we were able to announce from, uh, from Metro Vancouver that through Burns Bog 
our Metro Vancouver uh, Corporation has become carbon neutrality because of our protection and preservation of, of the Burns Bog. So I think a lot of people need to realize with, with the parks, the direct correlation it is to climate action in regards to sequestering the, the carbon dioxide and, uh, and also into, into protecting these, these areas for our, for literally the Burns Bog is what's ref often referred to as the lungs of the lower mainland. Thank you so much. Thank you. John McEwen is the mayor of Anmore and the chair of the Regional Parks Committee.